Devin Pike of the Dallas International Film Festival. Again, a phenomenal slate of films in the narrative competition. One of them, I believe in unicorns, has the universal theme of young romance gone horribly, horribly wrong. And you, know, you say it's a universal theme because everybody has an idyllic look at the way young romance should be, but it never goes the it way it's supposed to. It never turns out the way you think it will, yeah. Leah Meyerhoff is here, the director and writer of I Believe in Unicorns. First off, thank you for bringing such a powerful film to the festival. It's it's a gas, It's a gas to watch and it, it, in, in, in a way, it was, it was actually funny because I had a conversation with another critic friend of mine. We were saying that young romance just seems to have such a fertile ground for film. And especially for if you, if you get the right leads in it, then the, the sky's the limit. Talk about your approach on the project and where the script came from first off. Sure. Um, well, I was interested in telling a story about a young teenage girl who felt authentic and imaginative and dreamy and intelligent. And so the script really started with the character of Davina, who is a 16-year-old girl. And I spent months and months and months auditioning hundreds of teenagers until I found the actress Natalia Dyer, who was a junior in high school in Nashville at the time, and was just stunning. And we really shaped the character together and drew upon memories from my own teenage years as well as experiences that she was going through in high school at the time. And like you said, first love is messy, and it's complicated, and it's confusing. And I wanted to make a film that reflected all of those nuances and textures and emotions and confusion that happens when you are of that age, and specifically from a female perspective. Had Natalia done any film work prior to this? She had done um, a few small parts um, in like the Hannah Montana movie and a movie called The Healer, but this was definitely her first major starring feature film role, and she just knocked it out of the park. She was phenomenal. She's magnetic. There, there's something about a quality. I, I, it might have been the way you shot her, or just some, I mean, the, it, everything just with her shots, even when she's just completely at the edge of the edge of her own nerves, trying to, to suss through it all, you cannot take your eyes off. She just has that quality that you just want to look at her and you don't want to look away. And I think, and combined with our lead actor, Peter Vack, they had a kinetic energy and a chemistry, just natural, um, you know, on and off set. They just, they really were falling in love. So my job was, you know, was easy, just showing up. Did you almost have to have? Did you have to bring them back from that break? I a did little sometimes. Bit? They had such a strong energy that we really we tried to film as much in chronological order as possible to kind of keep it feeling fresh and feeling real and really going for that authenticity to ground the film and then combined with a kind of magical element. So there are more fantastical sequences in the film as well. Um, there's a unicorn in the movie. Well, uh, talk about that <laughs> a little bit because you, you can actually look at. I mean, you look at the film and it has. There, there's just these dreamlike qualities to it. When you were mapping out the script, were you looking at it more from a, I, I've got to tell a story regardless of how I'm going to shoot it, or were you conscious of how you're going to shoot the sequences when you I were was conscious it? of the visuals throughout, actually. In the script process, I had um, a narrative script written, and then I also had a visual lookbook that went in conjunction with the script. So I knew, again, going back to the character, I wanted to portray a girl who was a bit different and artistic and imaginative, and the film is from her perspective, so it has that vivid, fluid, um, dreamy quality to it, which led to all of the aesthetic decisions in the film, including shooting on Super 16 and Super 8, using stop motion animation, kind of all of the more experimental visual choices we made all went back to how would this girl see the world and how can we tell her story? How long was the post process on the film? Quite extensive. Animational and animating on film is a very laborious process. It's basically like taking some puppets, shooting one frame of film, moving some things around an hour later, another frame of film, again and again and again. So it took months and months and months to finish the animation. Who did you work with on those sequences? I had a team of animators. Our lead animator was um, a man named Josh Mahan, who I met through a friend of mine who worked on Beasts of the Southern Wild, which has a similar aesthetic quality. Um, but we had dozens of people helping out. We literally built a miniature world. It was a lot of fun. When you're, you've got the film in the can, you're, you, you've, you've got it the way you want it to look, which is a very specific you know, vision, specifically with, um, I believe, in unicorns. Were you, at that point, 
are, do you start wondering about how the audience is going to perceive the jumps in reality and, and the way that uh, her character mm -hmm. sees the world and, and so forth? Or did you just say, you know what, screw it, Beast of the Southern Wild worked because of those flights of fancy mm -hmm. and my film will have the same kind of impact? I was, I mean, in the in the script process, I was a little nervous. I'm like, how is this all going to come together? But then once we actually were on set and in production, I started getting the film back from the lab. I said, okay, this is going to work. As long as, as long as the audience cares about this character and relates to her on an emotional level, they will go on this journey wherever she goes. And I really think there is this fluid connection between the way that imagination works, sometimes you're focused on what's right in front of you and other times you are kind of daydreaming and moving off into a fantasy world. And I think there really is this fluid interaction between what is real and what is imagined. So we're going for that. We transitioned a lot through light actually. Um, again, shooting on film, we shot a lot of flash frames so that we could have points of entry into, into these kind of more fantastical sequences. So you're studying the J.J. Abrams school. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> you hear light leak, you hear yeah, yeah. lens flare, all the rest of that. Um, what is the future for I Believe in Unicorns once it leaves the festival circuit? Yeah, um, well, ICM is selling the film domestically, and we have yet to have our international premiere. We're actually figuring that out now. But we had our world premiere at South by Southwest. Then we went to the Atlanta Film Festival, where we just won Best Narrative Feature. That happened two days ago. And now here in Dallas, which has been amazing. And we have about a dozen other festivals lined up. So I'm going from here directly to the Florida Film Festival, Sarasota Film Festival, IFF Boston, Nashville Film Festival. I'm kind of on the tour. <laughs> so, and eventually, my hope is that it also will end up on VOD and online, where teenagers all over the world can see it, who maybe won't find it in a theater. I was, I was about to ask if you, if, you were, if you thought that in the current environment for film distribution, if theatrical either helps or hurts a film like I Believe in Unicorns. I think theatrical helps because it gets the press reviews and it does reach a certain um, more cinephile audience, which I think this film does speak to. But in terms of the younger demographic and teenagers specifically, everyone watches everything on their iPhones and their iPads and online. And so I think you really need to do both. And we knew that very early on. Again, even in the script stage, we started our Facebook page with, in conjunction with the script, and we have almost 100,000 fans. So our teenagers are, our teenage fans are online and will end up finding the film that way. And I'm curious if you would take on a project that had this many both practical and um, the secondary effects in the future, just from your experience with that. You know, I think the only thing I would do differently is if I were going to do all in-camera effects and stop motion animation, I would make sure to have an even larger team so that it's it's either, you know, more people or more time. I think you that's have an one. ulcer that's named, I believe, in you. Yeah, I don't know if I'll be animating <laughs> <laughs> with my own hands again, but it was a lot of fun. Where can people find out more about the film other than the, uh, they, they search it on Facebook for I Believe so Unicorns. So it's unicornsthemovie.com and then it's facebook.com slash unicornsthemovie. Easy to find. Very easy to find. And please do because it is a gorgeous film, an incredibly well done flick. Thank you for bringing this to the festival. Thank you for having me. And, and being the uh, third date on your tour t-shirt for <laughs> I Believe in Unicorns yep. on the back. There you go. <laughs> you can always find out more information about our alumni films at dollsfilm.org. Lee, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for coming Thank out. Thank you so much. Take care.